Today's lesson is called Kong Rong and the Pears and the Virtue of Filial Piety. So today we're going to go back to the second century in ancient China during the Han Dynasty. We're going to take a look at a very special young man, Kong Rong, who was extremely intelligent. And we're going to take a look at how he solved a particular problem, namely how to divide pears among his brothers. As an adult, Kong Rong was a very important government official in the late Han Dynasty. Uh, he was also a very popular writer and poet. He was considered one of the seven great scholars of the era of Jianan, of that particular time period. So he was a very important person. But his brilliance didn't just uh, arise in his adulthood. As a small child, he was considered a prodigy meaning uh, a child of extraordinary talent. And our story today is centered on Kong Rong at the age of four. Uh, Kong Rong was composing poetry at the age of four. He had an understanding of the basics of the moral system of the time that impressed and amazed adults. So this story, Kong Rong and the Pears, is about how Kong Rong solved a particular ethical dilemma. Uh, one day, Kong Rong's mother brought pears to him and his seven brothers. And Kong Rong was the sixth brother. For, at the age of four, uh, he was the next youngest. And Kong Rong didn't know how exactly these pears should be divided up. Uh, the oldest children said, we're the oldest, we're the biggest, we need the biggest pears, because they were all of different sizes. And the younger uh, of, the, of the seven, uh, <clears throat> Kong Rong's older brother and younger brother said, well, we should have the biggest pears, because we're the smallest, and we have the most growing to do. So there was a squabble over who would uh, get what pair. And so Kong Rong's father was outside. He heard the squabbling. He decided to come in and ask Kong Rong how he would solve the problem. So Kong Rong mulled over his answer. And when his father asked him what they should do, Kong Rong finally said, well, we should give the biggest pairs to the biggest brothers. I myself will take the smallest pair and I will give the next smallest pair to my younger brother. And his father asked him, well, why did you want to give the bigger pairs to your bigger brothers? And Kong Rong said, they're bigger than me and thus they need bigger pairs. But then Kong Rong's father asked him, you're bigger than your younger brother. Why would you give him a bigger pair than you would take? And he said, my younger brother is smaller than me, and he has more growing to do, so he needs a bigger pair. Kong Rong's father was very pleased with this answer. And why was he so pleased with Kong Rong's particular solution? Well, because Kong Rong put himself last and his family first. And this is the critical virtue of society in this period of time. We call this virtue filial piety. The core aspect of filial piety is putting one's elders above oneself and also looking out for one's inferiors. So if we look at Kong Rong's situation, he put his elder brothers above himself, but he also looked out for those his younger brother, who was beneath him in the family hierarchy. Filial piety is the core organizational principle of life in East Asian civilization. And if we look at naming patterns, we can see this. Uh, for example, uh, the name Kong Rong. Kong is the family name. Rong is the given name, or what we would call the first name in the West. So from a Western standpoint, the first name comes after the family name. <clears throat> which is the opposite of Western practice. This is because it is the family unit rather than the individual that is emphasized. In antiquity, 
this was even more pronounced. Uh, if an individual did something well and was rewarded by society, the entire family would be rewarded. Conversely, if an individual committed a crime and it were serious enough, the entire family would be punished as a result. This system, based on the concept of filial piety, arose in part, large part, due to the efforts of one individual, the philosopher uh, Kung Fu Zhu, or Confucius, who was in fact an ancestor of Kong Rong. Uh, Confucius determined that way before modern psychology, psychiatry, were ever uh, conceived, uh, determined that it's our family life, our early life, and our rearing that determine the kind of people we, we turn out to be. Uh, how we're reared, and in particular, our relationship with our parents and grandparents. Confucius believed that to have good citizens, good men, good women, you had to have good children who were reared properly to have filial piety for their elders. It would be the disciples of Confucius, those who followed him in the succeeding two millennia, uh, who would run the day-to-day -day affairs of the government of Imperial China. Uh, we call these scholar officials, uh, the term in the 19th century was Mandarin. Hence, we have the, the whole term uh, uh, Mandarin Chinese, meaning the official language, the language, the Chinese language as used by scholar officials. <coughs> Confucius believed that government is best when it's run by the very, 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 very well educated because he believed that education was a critical part of a person's moral development. But even more important than education was filial piety. If you were known for being very, very kind to your parents or your grandparents, there was often a chance that you'd be recommended for high office. Eventually, the Chinese state developed an examination system in which you would take uh, a series of essay tests, uh, essay questions, to determine your rank in the official hierarchy, but to get recommended for those tests, you first had to be recommended based on your filial piety. Because it was believed that if you treated your parents and your grandparents with great reverence, you would revere the state, you would revere the law, you would revere the ancient scholars like Confucius, and you would follow uh, the proper moral dictates. It wasn't just a matter of law though. In China, historically, there has always been a very, very, very large population, even in pre-industrial times. For example, in 2 AD, there was a census at the height of the Han Dynasty, and 57 million people were recorded in that census, which is an enormous number given the technology at the time. So there has always been an emphasis on agriculture, agricultural life, growing crops, particularly growing wheat in the north, growing rice in the south, making sure that this gigantic population could be fed because it was an enormous task and the government was chiefly considered responsible for managing this humongous agricultural system. <clears throat> and filial piety was seen as part of that. Uh, if you are part of a harmonious family, uh, you're part of a harmonious family farm. Whether you're wealthy, like Kong Rong's family was, and a landowner managing large numbers of peasant families, or you were part of a peasant family where you had father, mother, brothers, sisters, all engaging in agricultural uh, labor in order to ensure the maximum uh, surplus of food was produced. So the general principle uh, underneath the actions of Kong Rong uh, was vital for the maintenance of society. Uh, without a properly run family farm, without a properly run collective of family farms, without a properly run state, uh, mass starvation could occur and millions of people could perish. Uh, so this idea of revering your elders, uh, of obeying your elders and looking after your inferiors, this was critical to the functioning of the entire society. Lastly, uh, filial piety was important when it came to political allegiance. The emperor was portrayed as the father of the entire empire, of all of the Han people, and as such, uh, 
obedience to one's father was seen as a precursor towards obedience to the emperor and the imperial system. In fact, it was believed that it was men who rebelled against their fathers that were prime candidates for future rebellion against the state. So obedience to one's father, obedience to one's grandfather, uh, was seen as a, a prerequisite for uh, dutiful and orderly social life. Lastly, I think it's important to point out that Kong Rong exemplified these ideas as a young boy, but even more importantly, he lived them to the point of his own death. Uh, at the end of his life, he spoke out in favor of the young Emperor Xi'an, who was powerless, against the very powerful warlord, Cao Cao, whom we see pictured here. Uh, Cao Cao's men assassinated Kong Rong. Uh, so he died for the virtue that he had cultivated as a young boy. But he died heroically, uh, perceived by many at the time as uh, not just a great literary man and scholar official, <clears throat> but as a martyr. So I'd like for you to stop and think maybe about what children's stories in your own cultural background have to say about virtue, about the kind of person we should be, uh, the, the kind of uh, values that we should share. And I also hope that this little vignette about Kong Rong and the pears and how it relates to filial piety and what that is, uh, that maybe that stays with you and that um, sparks a deeper interest in the world's oldest continuous civilization. Thank you.